Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you for watching Lost Day Syndrome. I'm your host, Matt Brown. And, well, uh, here recently, the Oklahoma City Thunder just announced their 10th year anniversary. They have been a franchise for 10 years now. And, uh, well, that kind of got me thinking. Um, if you're like a 10-year-old, you know, Oklahoma City Thunder fan, that kind of makes sense on, you know, that you've probably been a Thunder fan your whole life. But... What I'm interested in is, you know, those who are older, who've been following the NBA for an extended period of time, like I have, and who are Thunder fans. So I'm just curious that what made you become a Thunder fan, especially if you're not even from Oklahoma? And, you know, who was your team? Uh, why are you not a team of theirs anymore? And so just kind of, you know, it's just interested on in your your story as an NBA fan, how you became an Oklahoma City Thunder fan. And I will explain how I became a Thunder fan. So I've been an NBA fan for a, a long time, basically back during the Sega Genesis days when they was uh, NBA Live 95 video game was like my one of my favorite games of all time. And, um, well, during that time, during the mid nineties, um, I was actually a, as you wouldn't believe, believe it or not, I was actually a Seattle Sonic fan and I even got the, uh, the hat to prove it. Look at this. This is going to be a, uh, a blast from the past for some people out there that can just get this hat on with one hand and my hair might be too much for it but <laughs> this is this is my hat that I had I bought like when I was in high school you know maybe like a freshman year um in high school and um I don't know maybe maybe middle school maybe I don't know it's hard to tell but I know it was like I was about mid 90s when I got this hat I remember I got it at Tulsa State Fair but you know, during this time, during the 90s, everybody was, you know, a Michael Jordan fan, a Bulls fan, and I always will be a Jordan fan. Uh, but, you know, at the time, that was kind of new as an NBA fan. And I wanted my own team. I, you know, everybody was Bulls or Lakers, you know, Celtics, you know, all the, you know, the popular ones. And I was like, you no, know, I kind of wanted one to call my own. And I was a big fan of Sean Kemp. I thought the guy was just so much fun to watch, and Gary Payton, the guy was just so full of personality and a character of his, he was like a bulldog out in the court, you know, him is trash talking. Uh, I loved, I loved the Sonics, they were my, they were my team, you know, I was a Sonic fan in Oklahoma, okay, I was I'm, I have no ties to the West Coast, none, okay, I'm actually originally from Texas and moved out to Oklahoma and I was like about 12 or 11, 11 year or 12 or something like that. So um, I didn't really have, I didn't really became an NBA fan when I was a little kid in Texas. Football was basically, you know, the religion down there and then moving out to uh, Oklahoma. Um, you know, I still follow football, but basketball started becoming interesting to me. And, uh, well, there wasn't any, you know, a team to adopt as my own. And so, like I said, instead of just jumping on the bandwagon with the Bulls and Lakers fan, I adopted the Seattle Sonics. And that was my team. And then, like, a year later, they actually made it to the NBA Finals and losing to, you know, Jordan's Bulls like everyone else did. But I, did, I remember how exciting things were as a Sonic fan at the time. You know, uh, Kemp and Peyton were really young. You had to think that, you know, they would still make another run, but they never did. The uh, Sonics just kind of was stuck in mediocrity. They traded camp for Vin Baker, and Vin Baker ended up turning into a, just a bust. Um, they end up, you know, making some decent runs. Uh, the best, you know, they end up trading. I was, I remember just, I just wanted one good run with Gary Payton. I just wanted one good run. You know, he was like my favorite player at the time. And I was so frustrated with the Sonics management. They just seemed like they didn't really care about winning. I don't know what they were caring about. To be honest. They, didn't, they didn't make hardly any any moves. Like the biggest move that I can remember to them making like a free agent signing when they had Gary Payton, their response to go up against the Lakers who had Shaquille O'Neal at the time. You know what the Sonics did? Oh, they, they went out and made a move and got Calvin Booth. Now, Calvin Booth, some people were like, who? Uh, yeah. You know, if you want to look him up, he's one of those goofiest guys that ever play the game right next to maybe Popeye Jones. <laughs> but Calvin Booth was going to be the answer to Shaquille O'Neal. That was going to help Gary Payton get a good one last final run as a Seattle Sonic, man. And 
And uh, so, you know, the, you know, the, the band, dis, you know, the team disbanded, you know, uh, you know, Kemp left, uh, Della Shrimp left, uh, Hershey Hawkins retired, Perkins left, you know, so Gary Payton eventually got traded to Boston and that's how Ray Allen became a Seattle Sonic. And, you know, that was actually a, a good year. They had, they had a, a good run with uh, Ray Allen, you know, him and Ray, uh, Richard Lewis, Britton Berry. Uh, they were a really good three-point shooting team at the time. They didn't still had no big man. That was like basically the, the the common theme almost every year with following the Sonics is they, they never could get a big man. Um, and there was during a time when a big man was really important. I, I mean, maybe not so much today anymore, but during this time it extremely was. But they had a good run. Uh, like I can't remember, maybe in. I couldn't maybe 2005 or something when there's Ray Allen, Richard Lewis, and you know, Brenton Berry. Um, they had Nate McMillan, Mr. Sonic, as the head coach. They made a they made it to the second round in the playoffs and they ended up losing to the eventual NBA champion San Antonio Spurs in six games in the second round. And um, that was it. That was just, that was the only thing that the, anything the last probably highlight the Seattle Sonics ever had. The very next year, Nate McMillan left to go coach Portland, and the Sonics just never just never recovered. Never it was never the same. They were stuck in mediocrity, and um, I was just like, you know, it just it was just pretty much most Sonic fans at the time probably were probably just reached that level of apathy and probably just didn't care anymore is just kind of went through the motions as a sonic fan so uh, then of course you know clay bennett bought the sonics and there was rumors that you know like at the time it seemed like extreme that the sonics would move to oklahoma city because you know clay bennett has some ties there i didn't believe it i was like well that's just like you know wishful thinking i guess you know for or just people trying to create gossip because the sonics where they had a bad, you know, deal in their key arena lease. Uh, they couldn't, you know, come up with any type of agreement to get a new arena. It seemed like the there was no hard. It didn't seem like there was any support from the city or the fans to try to keep the Sonics from leaving. And it doesn't make any sense to me. The Sonics, I thought, had a good tradition, had a good fan base. Heck, the Sacramento Kings were in the exact same position, but yet the Sacramento Kings, who have no history or at least tradition like the Sonics did, at least they had an NBA championship. Um, the, but the Sacramento Kings were able to keep their team. The Kings, the Sacramento Kings kept their franchise, but the Seattle Sonics couldn't keep theirs. That doesn't make any sense to me to this day. Um, I believe that the, if the Seattle really wanted to keep the Sonics there, it would have, it, they would have made it happen. And now it just seems like I feel bad for Sonic fans because obviously there's a lot of, you know, hatred and, and bitterness towards the Thunder, like as if, you know, Oklahomans stole their team and, Hey, Oklahomans, Okies, they just, you know, they wanted, they wanted, they're, they're, there's a big fan base, sports fanatic fan base in this state. And they, they embraced it by, you know, welcoming the uh, New Orleans uh, Hornets at the time. You know, they came out to support them. And so Clay Bennett saw an opportunity. And, you know, as a businessman, you know, he, he's, he was smart to do it. And the, now the Oklahoma City Thunder is like one of the most, I think, you know, I don't know what exactly, but they're definitely in at least top 15, probably the most valuable franchises. So at the time, you know, I was kind of mixed, you know, like, hey, you know, it'd be cool that this, to have a local NBA franchise team here in the state. And but as a Sonic fan, I was like a little, I don't know, like I had mixed mixed feelings, but um you know, I was actually a uh, Kevin Durant fan. You know, like I said, I was uh, originally from Texas. So I was a Longhorn fan. And so I actually, you know, been following Kevin Durant since Texas was recruiting him out of high school. So I was a fan already. And, you know, I remember how excited I was as a Sonic fan that they drafted him with the second overall pick. I was like, finally, they get a good superstar to build around because the Sonics just, they weren't good and they weren't bad enough to really get a good franchise player in the lottery. And they finally got one, lucky enough, in Kevin Durant. And they had him for one year and they were bad, but, you know, there was still hope, you know, because of the potential of Kevin Durant. But then they ended up moving. They ended up moving to Oklahoma City. And, you know, I I embraced it. I was like, you know, I, I'm a, I love the NBA. I love basketball. And I was a fan of Kevin Durant. And... I was like, oh, I get to watch him live, and I, and I did. I remember watching, going to several of the games with uh, to watch Kevin Durant, and of course, you know Russell Westbrook 
comes in um you know a year later and just uh become an instant fan of his as well and you know as i say the rest is history and so i eventually had to uh well say goodbye to the sonics because they said goodbye to me that's how i look at it and now i'm a thunder fan and so to be honest, I actually still miss the Sonics, and it was a team that kind of made me an NBA fan, and you know, the, you know, Kemp and Peyton days, I still miss those, but I, you know, I, I can't help it, it was just, a, it was obviously an easy transition for me from going to Sonics to the Thunder, being an Oklahoma resident, and uh, it's, like, it's been 10 years, I mean, 10 years, man, it's, it's gone by so quick, and uh, I've got I've so much you know, emotion invested into the thunder now. And, you know, I'm, I'm a diehard and always will be. And if this, if somebody would ask, you know, well, if the Sonics came back as an expansion team, what will you do? Well, I will always be a thunder fan. Now I, I feel like, you know, like the Sonics, this is kind of like, it's, it's kind of like an ex-girlfriend. You no, know, I kind of have like, you know, a soft spot. I will always will have a soft spot, you know, for them in my heart. And, and if it wasn't, you know, and the Thunder weren't doing well, I will kind of, you know, secretly be rooting for the Sonics to do well if they came back. But Thunder will always be number one in my heart. Always will be, you know, a Gary Payton fan, Sean Kemp fan. Those days I will always cherish of growing up. And uh, they've kind of helped me become, you know, a you know humongous NBA fan as I am today. So I always appreciate those times. So, but... Well, uh, anyways, that's kind of like my story. Kind of ram it on there. Sorry about that. Um, you know, just kind of throwing my, you know, going through my journey of, you know, being an NBA fan. Who was my team before, you know, the Thunder? Obviously, if you were as, as old as I am, you had to have been a team, you know, or before the Thunder. And I'm just kind of sharing my story. Who was my team? I kind of lucked out. Like, I'm in Oklahoma, you know, and where my former team eventually moved into. But if I was like... Living in Kansas or Missouri, I don't know what would have what would have, what what team I would be following, or if I would be following in the NBA, I don't know. But like I said, uh, I'm just happy the way things turned out. I uh, I love the Thunder. I'm happy with this team and looking forward to some many years rooting for this Thunder team. And uh, but that's my story. So uh, I'm just kind of interested to hear anybody else's story. Y'all want to comment down below? I will definitely check it out and uh, just give me like your your thoughts or or your. Your uh, testimony. Who was your team before the Oklahoma City Thunder came, and why? What happened to your former team? So, but that's all I got. And I want to thank all the new subscribers and all y'all guys for watching. And I will be back for some more videos. So keep in touch. Later, guys.